Hey, coffee nerds. I found it. Maybe you're here because you, like me, just really love coffee. And if that's the case, you likely have either a French press or a mocha pot in your kitchen. Maybe you have both, but maybe you're here because you're just new to this whole home brewing thing and you're trying to make the decision between these two affordable yet simple brewers. And so today, what I'm gonna do is put these two brewers to the test head to head and hopefully give you a really good sense of which one might be a better fit for you at home, especially if you're just getting into coffee or you're experimenting with you know, different brewers. These are two very, very classic brewers. Regardless of where you're from, you can find these all over the world. And in this video, what I wanna do is start off by giving you a pretty good sense of how each of these brew coffee. And then I wanna share with you some of the key attributes of the coffee that is brewed by each of these brewers. And then to finish it off, I wanna give you a little bit of my rating of where each of these brewers land on four different sliding scales. All right, let's quickly run through some basic brewing with uh, with the French press first. So it's pretty straightforward. I've got the plunger here. I'm using a recipe of 30 grams of coarse ground coffee to 450 milliliters of water at 95 degrees Celsius. And so that is a one to 15 ratio. And we just let that sit in here. You might give it a quick stir after all the water's in there just to break up the crust a little bit, or you can just give it a swirl as well. And then I would leave the plunger on top to keep a little bit of that heat in for four minutes. And after four minutes, maybe give it another quick swirl, make sure the any crust forming on the top settles to the bottom. Give it a nice slow plunge so that we're not forcing any more coffee grounds through the metal filter and then pour it right out into our cup. Now for the mocha pot, there's a few more little steps, but essentially we will unscrew this, take out our filter, take the bottom base, fill that with hot water in this case, uh, to just below the valve. And then we're gonna take our filter and we're gonna fill that up basically to the top uh, with slightly finer coffee or slightly coarser than espresso grind. In this case, I'm using around 30 grams of coffee. We're gonna pop that on top and we are gonna start the stove. I like to set it to just over medium and I'm gonna screw the top part, the handle, onto the mocha pot and then I'm gonna put that on the stove with the lid up so it, just so it doesn't overheat too much when the coffee starts to spew out. You start to see it trickling over and fill up the top half of the mocha pot and then as it starts to sputter or s splash the coffee out, you wanna remove it from the heat right away, close the lid, and I would even run it under a little bit of cold water to stop any further extraction and pour it out as, as soon as possible. So that's the basic recipe. And so one of the key benefits of using the mocha pot is you can get a much stronger concentration of coffee, similar as I mentioned earlier to espresso, but not quite. And so one of the key benefits of the French press is it's just very low maintenance. It, there's not a lot required to get coffee out of this thing. And they both happen to use a metal filter to filter the coffee grounds from the water and produce our delicious coffee. That is one thing in common. And so objectively, they will both let through a lot more of the oils and fine particles that are present in, in coffee and in roasted coffee. Whether that is a pro or a con, I will leave that up to you for this video, but in a future video, I will be troubleshooting both of the, the mocha pot and the French press. So if you're not subscribed now, now would be a great time if you wanna see a little bit more of that. Now we're moving on to the mocha pot versus the French press, the sliding scales. The first one, the ease of use. Which one is easier to use? Well, I would say both of them. At the basic brewing level, they're, they're pretty simple and straightforward. They've been used for a very long time, so they're tried and true. But I would say, considering that the mocha pot does involve a little bit more screwing, a few different pieces, as well as the fact that you do require a stove or some sort of heat source to brew a coffee with the mocha pot, as well as if you do not keep your eyes on it, uh, it can be sometimes disastrous. I would put the scale slightly over to the French press side in terms of ease of use. And so now let's talk a little bit more about coffee 
texture. They're both gonna be full bodied coffees. I'm not going to compare them to a Chemex or something like that, but I just made a quick French press and a mocha pot to do a side by side comparison in these little glass cups. And the reason why I'm using glass is so you can see some of that texture as well coming through the glass and hopefully give you a good idea of what that might look like. So for the French press here, I'll just give it a quick swirl. Now I'm going to press it through very gently and it all depends on how long you let it settle for because as I mentioned before, there are always fine particles that come out of the French press. We are using a metal filter here, but a lot of them will slowly float to the bottom. And with the mocha pot, because it is using steam pressure, it tends to be, the fine particles tend to be a lot more integrated into the brew itself. And so what I'm gonna do is leave these for around four minutes, both four minutes, and then give it a good taste and we'll be able to compare. And so now when I take a sip of this French press coffee, it's very nice, it's, it's a little bit more on the, on the clear side, even though there is quite a layer of, of crema sitting on the top. And then in terms of the smoke pot, let's just do a side by side. Wow, completely different flavors coming out. I'll get to that in a second. But what I'm finding here between the two is that the mocha pot tends to be a little bit more of a silky, thick texture. Uh, it, is, it is pretty heavy bodied coffee and you can see, looking at both of these side by side, they're pretty opaque. They're both, you know, average brown, brown liquid. But th going back to the French press, it's a little bit more watery. And that makes sense because this is a higher concentration. Um, but the texture itself, yeah, is a little bit more watery, has a little bit more of a dryness to it. Whereas this one, it just coats your whole entire mouth with the, with the coffee flavors. And so in terms of the full bodied sort of thick texture that, that I appreciate, again, this is a very subjective, thing for anyone, I would put the scale a little bit more onto the mocha pot. So more of that coffee texture that I would be looking for, a little bit more full bodied. But we'll get into that flavor comparison right now because I wanna talk about the flavor complexity between the two. And, and I kind of described that with the body, the texture and the flavors, they do go hand in hand. But it is a little bit hard to compare flavor complexity between two coffees that are at different concentrations. And so even though it is the same coffee, this one, again, to me, at this temperature, tends to taste, it's a little more open. It is obviously a slightly less concentrated coffee, more of that open flavors, you know, may maybe a little bit more rounded, potentially a little bit more flat as well. Whereas when I sip on this, because of the, the rate of extraction, it takes a little bit less time for that water to go through to come up into, into the top of this mocha pot, much more juicy, it's the exact same coffee, obviously ground at slightly different uh, grind sizes, but much more of that acidity is coming through. And they are both slightly darker roast. It's not absolute dark roast, but this one is coming through a little bit more of that, that punchy sort of tart acidity that you might actually expect from, you know, your, your favorite espresso or something like that. So no creme on here, but it does taste a lot more like espresso. So in terms of the sliding scale, I would say flavor complexity, I have to give it to, to the mocha pot in this case. Again, it's very subjective. If you use a different coffee than I'm using in the French press, maybe you're gonna get a little bit more here, or maybe you have a, a different technique. I'd love to hear about your French press technique in the comments. And let's move on to the last sliding scale, the last comparison here, which is all about the potential issues that you may encounter when brewing with with either of these brewers, the French press or the mocha pot. So one thing to keep in mind, with any brewer, you're gonna have some, some potential issues. For example, the espresso machine, to me, is one of the most complex coffee brewers, so many different moving parts. But when it comes to the French press, I would say that the main issues that you might have are, are minimal, but commonly they do come in glass. Of course, you can, get, you can get French presses that are not glass, and this leads to potential breakage. This is very, very, very tough glass, so it won't happen as often, but with this, it's pure aluminum, and so even though there are a few different parts involved, there, you don't run the risk of necessarily cracking this as easily. I'm sure, I'm sure some of you can do it. And so another issue with the, with the French press that might come up is the filter, the metal filter, either getting bent or 
just not working, getting worn out, not working as well as it should and letting some of those coffee grounds come up into the coffee. So those are the two main issues with the mechanics of the French press. And then I guess another one of the main issues with extraction is if you're not watching it, if you let it go over the four minutes, maybe 10 minutes or so, you leave it in there or you don't wash it, a lot of those flavors can stay over from the previous brews, that rancid coffee that is sitting in there and staining the glass and staining the metal. Um, those are some of the issues that you, but that's, those are issues you could run in with, with any brewer really. But obviously if you add too much water as well, uh, if you're not working with the right ratio, it can taste very watery and not have any complexity to, to the brew at all. So coming back to the mocha pots, uh, a few of the issues that you might encounter is, as you can see, there's a little valve right here. And so if this valve happens to be broken or maybe there's some calcium buildup in there, uh, for whatever reason, that can have um, challenges because it may not let out the steam as well or it may let out too much and it won't be able to build up enough steam pressure to actually come through and extract your coffee. Also, one of the big, big ones <laughs> that can be a challenge is if you leave this lid open, which is the recommendation, but you're not watching it and you go off and do something and your coffee is splurting out and it's just spraying everywhere, especially if the stovetop is too hot. It's something you really have to keep your eye on. So it does come fairly quickly, um, but you have to watch it. And so that is a potential issue. As I mentioned before, the build itself is pretty durable. It's pretty sturdy. And so in terms of the sliding scale, which one has the most potential issues? I would lean a little bit more towards the mocha pot. There's a few more potential issues as well as some of the little components that are inside and the little cracks that might need a much more thorough cleaning than say the French press. And so that is my quick breakdown, bit of a comparison between these two very classic coffee brewers. I hope that you got something out of this video, something that helped you make the decision between which one might be the right option for you. And if you like this video, hit me a like. That really helps me out a lot. Hopefully it was helpful and insightful. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be doing some more videos about the mocha pot and the French press and troubleshooting some brewing tips. So now would be a great time to subscribe so you don't miss that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video as usual. Cheers.